Hello, Theo Gary. Hi, Camila. How are you? I'm Wonderful great. to see you. Oh, so good to see you. And I'm so glad to be in conversation with you, Theo Jerry. So let's dive in. As you know, Jerry, this year has been a year of reflection for me and unpacking and learning and unlearning and really getting honest with myself about who I am and and how I'm showing up and not showing up in the world. And on this racial healing journey, um, you know, reconciling with about how my actions, even from when I was 14, using unacceptable language and perpetuating stereotypes, I have a connection with, you know, these systems and beliefs that actively oppress other people. And I think that the first part of this journey was um, feeling and then being like, okay, what can I do about this? And being, you know, a, a person that has a, a platform, I wanted to do it responsibly. And that's when I reached out to uh, Jerry and the National Compadres, Compadres Network um, to uh, do these uh, racial healing sessions. And we went on a really beautiful journey for a few weeks where um, I truly feel like I learned and, and my heart awakened so much. What made you decide to dedicate so much of your life's work to racial healing? My family uh, are immigrants, Mexicanos, uh, uh, and, uh, but we grew up in Compton. We grew up in a black brown neighborhood and and it was a beautiful neighborhood where you know i mean wonderful uh, people but but also it was a time of um of a lot of direct racism and discrimination and and one of the experiences that i gave you is that one time i was we were walking down the street i was walking home with some of my african-american friends and the cops stopped us and the cops stopped us and 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 threw us to the wall and 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 uh, the cops were asking me uh, are you with them are you with them? And I had to decide. Mm -hmm. I decided, was I with them or was I going to just go home? And I told him, no, I'm with them. And they threw me against the wall too. These issues are systemic. They're yeah. worldwide. They're in our systems. They're in our narratives. They're in everything. I know that you have your family and your family also has a journey. You know, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about your journey here. I come from a family of immigrants and my dad is from mexico and my mom is from cuba you always hear you know coming from a family of immigrants talks of you know this country and the, Amer the american dream but what i didn't learn because it wasn't in the history books was the amount of oppression and racism and discrimination that african american and native american people um have suffered in this country for so long and right. we have a habit as human beings and on a larger scale in a society and on a larger scale, this country and on a larger scale, the world, we bury the ugly stuff. We don't talk mm -hmm. about it. We bury the past. I felt like I have a responsibility as a human being to be aware of what's going on and be aware of how my friends and how other people are, are being treated and what's contributing to their suffering, even mm -hmm. if it doesn't necessarily uh, impact me in the same way. Well, you know, first of all, Camila, let me just uh, thank you and acknowledge you um, for being willing to go on this journey, but being willing to be honest and vulnerable and and acknowledge uh, your journey and who you are. You know, when you reached out to uh, myself and, and Ana Perez from the Latino Equity Project, the thing about racial healing and racial equity is not to think that you have to know everything, not to think that you need to have all the answers mm -hmm. it's deciding do you join the journey yes. do you do you stand with you know our uh, uh, our relatives and i call them relatives because we're all interconnected that way do you stand with them and i think that the next part of this is then to join with allies those folks that are speaking out for black lives that matter those yes. that are speaking out for for our native relatives that still haven't been acknowledged for all that's done to them, for the immigrant population, for our Muslim population, for LGBTQ pop, all the populations that 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 are oppressed. So, Camila, you're on this journey now, and and have learned so much. Um, what advice would you give other young people that are interested in in being a part of this movement? I would say just show up exactly as you are. Show up with your story, with the knowledge that you have right now. Show up with 
all the love that you have for your friends and for other people show up with all of your empathy and all of your stuff just show up we have to acknowledge our missteps and you know not be afraid of making mistakes or having made them and it's about you know just like we are uh to ourselves individually we hold ourselves accountable but then most importantly with love we learn and then we move forward because we need all the voices what about you jerry i want to invite people you know to yes. to, to join this this effort you know of, of beginning the dialogues of, of doing your own work of then standing up you know um against racism and discrimination but then standing for standing for that uh, the sense of sacredness of all people yes and that's what we have to create in this world we have to create yeah. in this world a space where everybody sees each other as family and everyone yes. is willing to walk with each other as family to pick us up when we fall but to bless us up when it's needed and mm. uh, and that's part of this journey of racial healing and we encourage and invite everyone to go on this journey with us thank you ma'am thank you jerry